author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. All right, well, thank you so much. I can't wait to get into this conversation. But before we get to this book, let's start with you. When did you know that putting words on page meant something to you, that you uh, wanted to do this? The first thing I ever wrote was when I was 10 years old. And uh, it was, um, I went, it went like this. I went to bed, and I dreamt that I ate the world's biggest marshmallow. And when I woke up, my pillow was no. gone. Uh huh. <laughs> and that kind of, and maybe it was an old joke that it I is. thought, is it an old yes, joke? Well, oh, then, then you see, I'm, I was a thief <laughs> even back at 10. And so it was like, that was, uh, you know, that kind of thrill of just kind of putting things together, even if it was an old joke that I stole. Uh, it was, that was the thing I liked to do. And I was dyslexic, or I am dyslexic. Oh, so really? So it was kind of the last thing anyone expected me to do. And People told me that I should steer clear of writing. Was, was reading a challenge? Yes, it was. Now, I will tell you that reading is the number one entry into writing, obviously. Usually for every writer, I've interviewed hundreds of writers, and it begins with the reading, and then often it morphs into the writing. But perhaps it did not for you. Were you not able to read a lot, or were you able to do it even though it was challenging? I, I could do it okay, but what I enjoyed was just the, the, um, the process of not having any right or wrong answer. It was ah. just whatever you wanted to do. You could put it on paper. It was a story. And it was just very liberating. So while school, in all of its <laughs> complexities, for me, was incredibly difficult, the actual sitting down and writing a little short story was incredibly liberating because it was my own thing. That's right. There's no right answer. That's right. And that's what scares so many people, I think, about writing. Yes. It's, it's the page is blank. What are you going to do? And you have to figure out if you're going to, you know, like, let's say I'm just going to go upstairs. I'm writing a scene in which I'm going from here to have a cigarette outside, which I'll right. be doing shortly. <laughs> um, you have to decide how you're going to do that. I mean, I could yeah. go and walk down, you know, how, how many moves is it going to take me to get outside? Right. And you could do, uh, you could do 20 pages on that. Is it the, and maybe it's boring 20 pages, but maybe it's also thrilling 20 pages. So it is. You know, it's funny. Some books you read, I always feel like you can, it's like a big, beautiful tree, but you, and it's, and it's lovely and it's got lots of branches, but you know where it started. You know, that tree is right there. And I read this book and it felt like a, a huge garden that was like sort of immaculately tended. And I couldn't figure out where it began. Now, I read an interview where you said it started with the idea of a, the myth of fathers. Is that actually where it began for you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my dad, you know, I grew up in New York City. This is a very New York City book. Um, and my dad was, you know, of that generation where he was kind of one of those impressive, unknowable, and slightly intimidating, right. you know, uh, uh, characters. And uh, I was at some uh, lunch or something like that, and he got up and he just said a few words. And he, and he, and he speaks very well, and he's very good on his feet, and he's, he can be charming in public. Uh, and, <laughs> and in <laughs> private, too. And I was sitting next to a really old friend of his, and, he, and she said to me, it's always amazing to see your dad do this stuff, because right. as a kid, he was incredibly shy, had a stammer, he couldn't look you in the eye. And this was not the father that I knew at all. Right. Uh, so the, the impetus was, you know, what if you could meet your dad when he was 17? How would your impressions of this, you know, unknowable, intimidating figure, you know, change if you could see that person at his most vulnerable? And so that was the question that it began with? Yeah, essentially. But then it grows. And then it grows because then I thought, okay, so... Who's the dad? Who's the dad? And I, 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 like, I like the idea. I, I had this one word in mind, reproduction. So uh, to have the dad be this Philip Roth slash J.D. Salinger-like writer, you could then take all of his, his books and reproduce them and have fun with them. And also, I then thought about what would it be like if you were the son of a writer who is so present on the page and so knowable on the page, yet in person is, is aloof and is often writing. 
Yeah. Because if you have a Philip Roth like career and and my author in this book does, it's not like Salinger in that way. So he's written, you know, 14 big books. That's a lot of time writing. It's yeah. pretty much all you're doing. Um, so the viewpoint of the sons where they see all these books out there and yet they don't know their father, right. though they can know their father through the books. Can you remember when you felt like you got it? Was it when it got published or what? It, no, did you yeah, ever feel I still like could like. Yeah. If I could, because you know that moment, go through everyone's copy and like <laughs> cross out big stretches of it. Uh, uh, it was, you know, with writing, the fun part is the part before you write. So all the thinking about the book was great. How long do you think about it for? You know, six months. Yeah. What does that mean? Thinking about it? you sitting down there writing. You're sitting down. You're 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 doing, a, you're doing yeah, okay. a, a not a detailed outline, but, but a pretty good outline. Yeah. You're talking to yourself. You're you're trying to get into the character's head. You're making, you know, you're trying to figure out the character arcs and how they overlap. And that's all great because... But can you do that when you're not writing? I mean, in other words, can you really know the character when they haven't started talking? You, can, you can feel them. You can feel yeah. who they are. Yeah. Okay. And so, and w the writing part is when you get neurotic, is when you start to <laughs> Why? stress over the words. Why? Okay. Because that's, it's always what you have in your head and what comes out on the page is invariably a huge disappointment. Because really? what's in your head, yes. Really? Uh -huh. I don't believe you. It's a hundred... Seriously? Yes. Okay, I'm going to tell you why I said that. Okay. Because I thought it was ironic that Jess Walter wrote the blurb here. I felt the uh -huh. same thing reading this book. It was exact same thought passed in my head when I read Jess Walter's Beautiful Ruins, which mm -hmm. is within the first page I said, okay, this guy has his technical, what I call technical mastery, meaning this. My sense was I felt I could relax because I felt that the writer could convey, if he had a thought, he could put it on page and not worry about it. That was really, that was my sense of it. But you say... I fooled you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Another one <laughs> well fooled. Well done. Well, it's like when you go to the... I know that feeling. I feel that so intensely when I go to the theater and it's the first five minutes and the curtain's up and you're just like... You know. Are they going to forget their lines? Right, right. I'm so yeah, panicked yeah. that they're going to screw it up and I'm going to yeah. be there for their embarrassment. Yeah. Uh, so I know what you mean when you where certain books that you open up. You're like, okay. Do you ever have the experience of... Uh, you throw something in at the beginning just for whatever reason, and then you get to the end and you say, oh, that thing that I just stuck in there, that actually belongs. That actually answers some question at the end. Yeah, that's the cool part. You Isn't know, it? Yeah. That you didn't plan. And the cool part, too, is when you, so you're so invested in thinking about this book 24-7 yeah. for five years. <laughs> and, you know, in the meantime, you're still you're spending most of your day just, going in the internet doing you know <laughs> right. not writing but you'll find things that oh my god that i i need this right now That's and right. it just appeared yeah as if by spooky magic to put in my book right here i mean it, that's it's what's great that's when things are good you know andre debuse talks about uh he, i love listening to him talk about the writing process and he talked about the receptive sort of vibration you have to go into to really uh to write, do you experience it that way? Yeah, I think that's, it's like almost like listening. I feel like it's close to yeah. less than thinking. And I mean, not to get too. Uh, um, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. You do, <laughs> you do kind of open yourself up to the universe yes. and allow the universe to talk to you in this very specific way, and yeah. to say, okay, someone's telling me something here. The narrative gods, whoever they might be, and I should follow this trail a little bit more. All right. What I'm going to do, Dave, is I'm going to ask you one more question, mm -hmm. and I'm going to turn it loose to the audience here. And what I'd like you to do is uh, I want you to finish the sentence for me. Oh, God. Yes. Uh -huh. You ready? <laughs> if writing has taught me anything, it has taught me what? Uh, you know, I don't know what writing has taught me. I think it's... Um I'm not really someone who believes in self-improvement. I mean, it's just... What? I don't. I think that writing is just something un, uh, that I, I, for good and bad, is what I want to do and need right. to do. And there, there's, you know, if it's taught me anything, it's just taught me about uh, perseverance and staying yeah. with it. Because uh, it is hard. And growing up, it was not something that anyone thought I should do. And so it was kind of an act of will for me to write. And so if I were to ever, and like The Normals, which was this first novel I wrote, was, you know, the f for the first year, all I could write were letters to my editor saying, please, 
release me from this contract because <laughs> this is awful. But, you know, you finally get it done and you're like, okay, I, I slayed the dragon. You know, I did it. Yes. Uh, so it, it kind of, if it's anything, it's, it's perseverance. 